By the 4th century AD, there existed in the minds of many sincere Christians an unfortunate gulf between the physical world and the spiritual world, and between the temporal realm and the eternal realm. The blending of ideas from Plato with the teachings of the Church led to a religious duality in which the eternal concerns of the soul were set at odds with the temporal concerns of the body. A truly spiritual person was one who was detached from the material world. Vows of poverty and celibacy were marks of a truly spiritual life. The denial of physical pleasures, asceticism, became elevated to a virtue. Abstaining from foods, seclusion from society, vows of silence, and sometimes even self-inflicted physical pain went with the territory of the truly devoted believer. Holiness became a matter of detachment from the physical world and retreat or withdrawal from material aspects of this present life. The Apostle Paul prophesied this problem would come about. In 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 4, he wrote, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. A biblical concept of holiness does not mean a person detaches oneself from the physical world or from any legitimate activities or pleasures to be found within it. It does mean that one lives life in a manner pleasing to the Lord, whether when mopping the kitchen floor or when devoting oneself to prayer. It also means freely partaking of the good things God provides within the borders of his designs. It does not mean we can't eat chocolate, but it does mean controlling our appetites and passions instead of being controlled by them.